Hello, how's everybody doing today? You should be able to tell it's a little rainy out here in the Midwest, so I'm in under shelter at my local state park, and let's take a few minutes to talk about tripods and the ones that I own. First, a disclaimer. I don't like using tripods particularly, and I sure don't like watching tripod reviews. Why? Because I'm always tempted by some new carbon fiber beauty that's been designed and manufactured by cra craftsmen just begging to be taken out in the mud and the muck and the salt water for landscape photography. So please, just stop tempting me. I already own these three tripods. But seriously, it really is a love-hate relationship. So let's talk about the reasons why you may need a tripod and then how to find the tripod that suits your needs. Then stay tuned and I'll tell you why I also own a monopod and what I do to stabilize and support my camera when I'm photographing wildlife from my car. I use a tripod for virtually every landscape photo that I take. I also use a tripod occasionally when I'm photographing wildlife or when I'm videotaping wildlife and I want the extra support and stability that I don't get when I handhold. And even though I think tripods are a bit of a pain to use, a bit of a pain to carry, and more expensive than I think they're worth, I can't imagine not having one or more. I think other photographers feel the same way, or there wouldn't be so many reviews on tripods, and they would only own just one. And any new or experienced photographer will eventually know what it's like. Pull out your carbon fiber beauty, fiddle around with it, then place your camera on top on full display. And there we have it. The modern marvel that a digital camera is placed upon three legs that are modeled after the Great Pyramids. But the gray pyramids are still standing, and I think all the cameras that were on top have disappeared. So why would you need a tripod? First and foremost would be the stability for longer shutter speeds. So if you're taking waterfall photos, astro photos, or any low light photos where you need the long shutter speed, you're gonna need a tripod. Number two, for the extra stability and support, especially for long lenses, when hand holding isn't enough. Number three, for the precision that you may need when you're doing some compositions such as bracketing or panoramas. Video shooting stability. And then an asterisk number six, some photographers say that using a tripod forces them to slow down and get a better composition. I suppose that could be true if you don't normally take your time with compositions. For me, I find that taking the time to get out my tripod deploy it, fiddle around with it, and get the setting that I want takes me away from the time that I like to spend immersing myself in the scene and visually looking for that composition before I ever pull out my tripod. But all photographers are different. Because of this, one of the things that I really want in a tripod is the ease to set up. I want to be able to deploy it easy, I want to be able to level it easy, and I want to be able to get the composition that I have in mind without futzing too much with the tripod setup itself. So when you're ready to buy a tripod, what features and functions should you look for and what specs should you look for? Keep in mind, many of these will conflict each other for your final tripod choice. Number one, of course it should be stable or why else use it? Also, you need to consider the payload capacity. If you're going to be using a long lens, you'll be needing a sturdier tripod than if you're just using a uh, lighter, let's say, wide angle lens. And number three, as I mentioned before, the usability of the tripod. How easy is it to set up? How easy is it to compact down for packing? How easy is it to level? How much does it interfere with actually taking the photograph versus improving your photograph? Should also consider the weight of the tripod. That's going to be very dependent on your use case as well of what's acceptable to you. What's the max height? What's the min height? So that you can get low to the ground for photos as well. Again, it's going to be dependent on the use case that you need the tripod for. And then finally, how portable it is. Another one of them that's going to depend on your use case. If you're going to be backpacking long distances, you'll probably want a lighter tripod. If you're going to be just going from your car, a sturdier, heavy tripod will be fine. 
As you can see, I currently own three tripods that I use for different use cases. I have owned and sold others that didn't fit my needs, but I've settled on these for now, and they do take care of my needs. The first one that I have here is my general purpose landscape tripod. It's stable enough and sturdy enough for all of my landscape needs, and it's light enough to carry on most of my day hikes. It also has the ergonomics that I like and prefer uh, for my um, tripods. It's got a leveling base on top, which makes it easy to um, level the tripod once it's set up without futzing with the ball head. I also have on top of it a, an Acrotac pan and tilt ball head that I've recently added. I'll give you a more detailed review on this uh, later. Drop a comment if you want to hear about that. It has twist locks, which I prefer slightly over the flip locks, but that isn't a deal breaker for me. And this is the Leofoto LS285 CEX, which is the favorite tripod that I've owned so far. And it's part of the Leofoto Ranger series of tripods. And as you may be able to see, I've wrapped the upper legs on this one to add a little bit more padding when I carry it or carry it over my shoulder. And it also adds a little bit of insulation when I'm out on cold mornings and I'm hand holding it. And uh, as you know, carbon fiber can be pretty cold to handhold, so I've added those on. Next, I have a beefier tripod that I mainly use for wildlife and bird photography and video. It's a very sturdy, very stable platform, but it's heavier than my landscape tripod. On top, I've got to attach the fluid head from Manfrotto MVH502AH. Very convenient for getting smooth panning, smooth tilting, which is an absolute necessity I have found for video. Um, I like it better than the gimbal head that I had on there before, but again, every photographer has different desires of what they're using. It also has attached onto it a leveling base uh, from Leo Photo that didn't come with the tripod. I added that separately. I've also wrapped the legs with additional padding on this one, make it easier for carrying again, as also as makes it easier to, or more comfortable to grab hold of on those cold days. And this is the Benro Mach 3 Series TMA 37C. If I'm on a longer hike or setting up the tripod will be difficult for wildlife, I'll typically take a tripod with me instead. But it typically stays in the car and I'll use it for wildlife video and photography, as I said, near my car when it's easy enough to maneuver around. I also have this ultralight little travel tripod. It's a Surui T025X. I mainly use this for attaching my vlogging camera on, but if I'm out backpacking or on a very long, uh, more strenuous hike and I want to cut weight down, um, and I won't need the stability that I will get from my other tripod, I will carry this along. It doesn't have the maximum height that the other one has, so that's a drawback to it. It isn't quite as stable, but as again, if I'm not gonna be putting it in the water, not in a windy condition, it'll work fine on those days that I need to cut the weight off of my carry load. So those are the three tripods that I currently own and they work well for the use cases that I described. However, I'm always looking at a new tripod, every tripod review, as much as I hate it, to see if some other carbon fiber beauty can replace one or hopefully both of them for my future photography needs. As I mentioned before, there are times when I'll also use a monopod instead of a tripod for wildlife and bird photography. When I don't want to handhold, but I don't want to carry my tripod because of ease of setup or the distance that I'm going to be traveling with it. This one is a Cobra 2 from iFootage and it has a Weberly head attached that makes it easy to, to tilt. Very supportive, very stable for what I need it for. Forgot to mention that it also has this very convenient and quick uh, detachment system for the feet at the bottom and for the head on top.
So when I'm photographing birds or wildlife from my car, I use this piece of uh, foam pipe wrap on my window edge to uh, stabilize and support the lens as I sit here and photograph or wait for the right opportunity to photograph. So really a cheap, easy solution. Um, of course, if it's marketed and branded by Get so or really right stuff, um, the price will go up. But for now, you can go to your local hardware store, buy one of these, and uh, really does a good job of uh, supporting and stabilizing your camera when photographing from the car. Thanks for joining today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please consider giving it a like, subscribe, and comment below. Thank you again, and get outside.